This is um, Not So Grand Designs episode two. Um, this uh, episode is all about the professional services associated with trying to build an eco house um, on a plot that we've just secured. So we um, reached agreement on the plot at the beginning of April. It's now the 6th of May um, and we're into the process. So what I wanted to do is to run through all the different professional services that you might have and talk about the ones that we have actually contracted or will contract for. So um, the most important one at the beginning certainly is your architect. So your architect uh, designs the house, inputs the documents to the planning process, liaises with other professionals, does the utility searches and ultimately at the end does your building regulations submission. We um, met with five architects and eventually picked the one that we felt um, understood the building technique that we wanted to use, which was SIPs, um, but also had relationships with professionals in the local area, specifically the planning um, authority, and had previous experience uh, applying for planning for these types of properties in this type of area. We decided to take on a planning consultant. Not everybody does this, um, but the planning that we originally had was an outline planning permission, and we were then going to be applying for reserve matters. Um, this includes the discharge of certain conditions that were set in the outline planning permission. And because we were um, working in a slightly sensitive uh, planning area, we decided to use a local planning consultant who um, had experience with working with the planning authority that we were going to be applying to. So uh, planning consultant uh, discharges the conditions from the outline uh, prepares the documents and su submits the reserve matters application and then handles all the representation to the planning committee. At the same time and for the planning process, we have to provide a geotechnical report, which is basically a ground study. Initially, you do phase one as a desk study. We pay for that. And that does all the searches for things like mining and um, underground structures and um, reports of subsidence in the area and all that sort of thing. Um, so that was um, done where we bought actually a license um, from the company to use one that had been prepared for the original owner of the property. Yesterday, the 5th, we did the trial dig, um, which is the phase two pro part of the process, where they test their assumptions in terms of um, the land and any contamination and also take samples um, for testing. The most important part from our point of view was to understand what the physical structure of the property was. Um, and it transpires that um, most of the property is covered with what's called made ground, which is basically, in our case, dump from the old uh, quarry. And so it's a mixture of soil and stone and other bits and pieces. Unfortunately, with made ground, you can't use that as the basis for foundations. So we had to dig down through that to find the bedrock, which we found at 2.6 metres, which is about eight feet. That's pretty deep. Um, now, to scrape away huh, the soil over the whole of the property in order to do that, you would end up with an enormous uh, soil removal issue. And uh, so our sus suspicion is that we'll probably go with some sort of piling system to go down through the made ground and uh, get to the bedrock and provide some stability for the property. This reduces the amount of excavation we need to do. And it may well be that we can do um, soakaways, which we'd assumed originally that we couldn't do. Um, and it may also mean that we can um, do a lot less excavation than we were originally planning to do with none of it effectively into uh, rock. Um, as part of this, they then prepare remediation report, we are expecting to find some contamination in the soil. And so the normal remediation for soil contamination is to put three feet of um, graded and cleaned topsoil on top of the, the land. We may have to scrape back in order to put that on um, and give us a level surface to work through, but it will give us a garden and some landscaping at the same time. So some of the cost of the physical work is paid back in terms of the final shape of the property. We do know that we will have to um, put in a radon barrier because it's a high risk radon area, which involves putting a membrane and a ventilation gap um, underneath the um, 
the foundation so that uh, the radon can escape um, to the to the atmosphere. Also, as part of the um, initial outline planning permission, we are required to do an ecology study, which includes a biodiversity mitigation and enhancement strategy, um, which basically is is all about um, wildlife considerations, insects, bats, and birds in our case, and planting recommendations for how the properties are treated in the future to encourage. Uh, wildlife and the reason for this is we're right on the edge of, um, of open countryside so we have to be mindful of uh, where we sit in the local uh, environment. Having completed those we'll then submit obviously our planning um, application but in parallel we'll be looking for a groundwork contractor who is able to work with the type of physical construction that we're using and the um, resulting foundation structure um, they'll have to clear the site um, and uh, do a first pass at landscaping and terracing, bearing in mind the foundation issues we've already discussed. Um, it's possible that, for instance, we'll have to have, do what's called mini piling, which is basically putting concrete piling down onto the bedrock. And any retaining walls that they need to do, and obviously also drainage and services design. At the same time, we'd normally uh, recruit a structural engineer who has a variety of roles, consulting on the point and line loadings from the structure to the foundations and input to building regulations to make sure everything's structurally sound. They can also provide advice on the foundation and reinforcement strategies, retaining structures, uh, confirm structural integrity and potentially advise on drainage and utility design as well. So because of the structure we're going to go with, we'll have to have a structural engineer. The two roles that we have passed on, one is a quantity surveyor um, who basically acts as somebody that keeps control over all of the costs. But he's probably more appropriate to a traditional build because we're going with a SIP design. It'll be a single fixed price contract uh, with a SIPs manufacturing company, uh, which takes some of the variability out of it. So we don't think we need a quantity surveyor. Um, and some of that is an overlap to a project manager, but we're going to planning to do that ourselves. So both of those roles are, are basically made redundant by our approach to how we do it. Um, we also have, um, uh, we'll need a general contractor who will provide CDM compliance, subcontract to the SIPs manufacturer, do the roofing, cladding, internal fit out, electrics and plumbing. The SIP manufacturer will make the main structure of the building, including the windows and doing the air tightness and uh, heat loss calculations, which we need for the tech. And we'll also provide some input to the building regulation submission when that's completed at the end of the project. Obviously, they'll have to coordinate with the groundworks um, contractor and the structural engineer. Finally, we'll be looking for an ecotech contractor who will supply and fit the air source heat pump and MVHR design and fit any underfloor heating, um, put in the control system, solar panels, battery systems, and also apply for the grant rebates that come with having renewable energy, the renewable, um, renewable heat incentive, um, which we'll need to complete by March of next year in order to qualify unless it's extended. So attached to this uh, video, we've also included the photograph of the um, hole that we created in the ground, which you can see is eight feet deep, really only for a bit of uh, visual variation um, in this. Um, but yeah, that's it for now. Thanks.